All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Monday, April 11th, 2022 Conway Select Board meeting. And at 6.15, it will also be a joint meeting with the Conway Finance Committee. Call the meeting to order. And the first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of April 4th. Look good. Ready? I move that we approve the minutes. That's it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next item is to approve four warrants. We have the accounts payable warrant for $81,055.58. Payroll warrant for $117,450.77. The payroll deduction warrant $29,646.47 and the student activity warrant for $1,251.75. Anybody have any questions about any of those? Nope. So I move that we accept the, the warrants. Second. I read. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Meetings attended by select board members. Erica? Done with me. Uh, I had actually two. Uh, one was um, one was related to the letter that we're going to talk about, uh, this uh, new tower that Vertex wants to build out at the Ashfield end of town. And uh, I don't know if, if I mean, everybody doesn't know where it's going to be, but if you go all the way almost to the Ashfield border to where the bicycle camp used to be, and then from the bicycle camp, you hike straight up an incredibly long way to the top corner of that property, which is virtually the top of the hill. That's where they want to put up a tower. And I think from up there, we could see, and it was hard to know exactly because it's a long ways away, but you might have been able to see Deerfield, uh, which, you know, and it looks, it looks right down the, the valley, you know, uh, that where we need where we need coverage. So it's, it, it's really a perfect location for, for another tower. And uh, so the Conservation Commission, we hiked up there. To, and there isn't much wetland up there. It's high enough and a couple little seats. But anyways, interesting hike. And, uh, and then Thursday, we had a Frontier Capital meeting. I think it was Thursday. Uh, and and the issue was boilers and then, you know, it's yet one more frontier, not so much undone maintenance, but frontier expenditure to keep the school going that you probably know about it, but I, I didn't know about it. I don't know how many of the other selectmen knew about it, not associated with the school, but you know, that apparently all last winter, they struggled to keep the school heated with only one boiler running of two. And, uh, and uh, the other boiler is possibly repairable for not too much money. They don't really know, but not terrible money. Uh, but the parts are so old now that they can't get parts when some of the, those parts break. And perhaps it's time to put in a new boiler. Yeah, and, uh, and 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 you know, and uh, maybe it's because this this meeting was following on the climate change energy meeting that occurred last Saturday, and so that some of the selectmen were at that that everyone is thinking climate change plus also state state subsidies and and uh, and and the state becoming more serious about wanting to meet its climate goals. But some of the selectmen were very positive towards maybe doing this cheap replacement for now and then looking into state subsidized like ground source heat pumps or some some kind of uh, carbon free heating system for at least half a frontier. It would, you know, it would be it would be that half of it. And ultimately, you know, they would maybe do the other half, but anyway. It was, so it was an interesting meeting and uh, 
it was this, and we had it so the superintendent could talk to the select uh, to the to the school committee. And I have no idea how that went. So maybe he did. Um, that's tomorrow. Oh, that's tomorrow. Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure. I knew it was coming up. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, I'll, I'll start with my second to last meeting, which was that capital meeting. And for um for those that don't know, the uh, Frontier Middle Senior High School has two gigantic 12 million BTU boilers. I mean, those are massive industrial boiler. And uh, the, um, the way that they're installed, what the, we focused a lot on the room that they're in. So they're in a big room, but they're big boilers. And so there's boiler number two, which is the one that failed. Then right next to that is boiler number one. When you go in there, there's barely enough room to walk around boiler number one to get to boiler number two. And then past boiler number one, there's all the there's a double door to get out, but there's all the duct work. And the, all, so if boiler number two needs to get replaced, which would be four hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the boiler itself, um, they would be at least another hundred thousand dollars to cut the existing boiler up into tiny little pieces so that they could be carried <laughs> around. And you'd have to cut all this duct work out. Um, it would be this massive, massive undertaking, and um, and and yet there was, you know, when the administration proposed it, uh, propo you know, talked about it, they were giving all the numbers and, and ways that we could do a new boiler, and so uh, you know, and I asked, you know, that's the worst case scenario. What's the best case scenario? And the best case scenario is that. Any unknown period of time and that's the goopy thing about boilers they might go they might fail tomorrow and they might last another 20 years um and just like the furnaces in most of our houses right and so so this boiler in the, these are 27 year old boilers um and the, their life expectancy has already expired but I think when you really looked at the idea of spending 450 for the boiler plus 100 something to get it out um, versus maybe 2,500, I, I, I kind of thought that it was, you know, we couldn't, as much as it'd be good to start addressing our climate change issues, it, let's wait until we we know that, that we need a new one. So and they didn't have a price on the climate change. That, that right. for 50 was just for another propane right. boiler, right. just like they have. And I mean, the situation is bad. The old one, the, the broken one is like leaking. There's water, there's standing water in that room. It's bad. Oh. Um, and it's, you know, so it needs to get fixed. And I think the efficiency would go from that boiler is about 80% efficient and they would install a 97% efficient boiler. So, yes. so we would save money on with they fuel would. and everything. And, and I took the opportunity to remind everybody at Frontier once again how they do not have a Frontier Capital Stabilization Fund that is functioning. Um, they've been too scared to bring it up at time. They're, they're too afraid that it's going to, that they're going to catch a lot of grief about it. Um, and so, you know, I did take the opportunity to remind them that we at Conway have such a thing and that they should. You know, so I regularly remind them that they should all aspire to be more like us. <laughs> they all just love to hear me say over and over. Yeah. Um, uh, so that, yeah, so, so we're going to do the repair and we'll see where that takes us. But the, the idea of replacing that is just really, wow. Um, and then, so is that what's going to get presented to the school committee to do yeah, the repair? Actually, he wants me to present the, 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 uh, the stabilize because it's a whole all new since since we last brought since I last brought it up it's in basically and much every year there's a lot of turnover in the school committee because Deerfield and Sunderland have five whatever so I don't know how many people they have on Frontier or what do you do yeah we at Conway has me and we have two um, so um, so two, Tuesday was the school committee the Frontier school committee meeting where. Um, remember, I was really concerned about they wanted a, 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 a to, to have a constitutional convention to um, amend our agreement, our four town agreement. And actually, that was sort of a 
poor, uh, poorly, poorly drafted agenda. What, what they, so we, besides being in frontier, a four town agreement to be in frontier, we are in a superintendency union called Union 38 of our four elementary schools that have joined together to hire a common superintendent, business manager, and, and central office. Um, there is no written agreement governing that relationship. It's just custom and practice. So, and although people that were involved in 1954, Lee, um, uh, Gray, um, Bill Graves' dad, so, so, and, and plus Bernie Kubiak, um, when he was the, the uh, uh, town administrator at Deerfield 15 years ago, he said that he, that, that he knew of, that, that there was one. But, so, but if there is a written agreement, nobody's been able to locate it. I remember a couple years ago spending a whole day with Tom Taran, that office apart, looking anywhere looking at all the old town meeting minutes to see whether mm. but apparently there's we don't have an agreement that governs our relationship with, at the with, grammar school yes which is um and, and so there's been a couple of real snafus re, you know number one is um when, when you go when you go to hire our, our our hiring process of a superintendent or a business manager is especially messy because we have to meet together frontier plus union 38 which is 27 elected officials, each with a vote. And it's, and we all have to vote the same way. Otherwise, it's all, it, we're screwed. So, because we don't have a written agreement that's, that, that binds one town. So, so if one elementary school decides, no, we're not going to, we, we don't support this candidate, then, and everybody else does, it's a mess. And it's uncharted territory, and we have no idea what to do. Um, and the same thing came up this year with mask mandates when the schools felt, you know, Sunderland with Sunderland um, didn't want to ever remove the mask mandate, and all the other schools did. And um, through parliamentary procedure and the fact that nobody on the Sunderland School Committee knew anything about Robert's Rules of Order or like how to do things in a in a meeting. Um, I was able to advance, you know, whatever. They found themselves all of a sudden going along with everyone else sort of against their will. But um, so, so there's a desire to go tackle that. But again, once you, op once you open that, we're opening up a whole big can of worms. And so, you know, my whole thing was that um, being from Conway, we're, we're afraid of the, I'm afraid of the tyranny of the majority of like getting in, you know, ha having, having Deerfield and Sunderland try to throw their weight around. And with the frontier operating agreement, any amendments, any revisions have to be voted on by all four town meetings. And um, if any one town says no, then it doesn't happen. And so right off the bat, I said, this has to be our baseline. We can't give fewer minority protections in an agreement that we're about to, to come up with than the one that already exists. And everybody had different thoughts about that. So that's the way it was when we talked about changing the mascot. All four yeah. towns had to, it had to right. be unanimous. Right, that, that was frontier. So I mean, frontier. the long and the short of it is that everybody said, uh, I don't know about this, what we're gonna do, but you need to be head of this committee. And I don't want to be head of that committee. <laughs> But, but apparently, like are, uh, apparently, right? they're like you're the only you. You had some really good thoughts, and this stuff needs to get worked out. So I. Um, well, it sounds like there's also a model. I mean, there are lots of other schools. Yeah, yeah so. we're, we are apparently the only superintendency union in the state without an actual operating agreement, and it, uh, we should have one. <laughs> Probably, I mean, that's, yeah. There, and and there has to, find there it. has to have been one, but. Yeah. But it's night. It was 1950s, and um, nobody's been able to find it. But each of the towns runs their own elementary school, right, so right. It's, it's not an agreement at that level. Correct. It's, it's just it's, the administration. And uh -huh. right. Oh, right. And what happens? And, and you know what happens uh, when there's a disagreement? Basically, we yeah. have no, yeah. we have no procedures, it's, and everybody just crosses their fingers and hopes it doesn't happen. And that's really not the best plan. <laughs> Although I practice it frequently. Um, uh, so, the, and then Friday was the flag raising 
Um, Sorry, I missed that. I, I actually, I had to, yeah, I meant I was, to tell you all, I had to be in my office that day. But. And I, so I for one, work. was very glad that I asked our fire chief to come there because he <laughs> took it upon himself to rip, to try to raise the flag. And I knew that was going to be glitchy. And sure enough, it was all glitchy. And everybody gathered to cheer for when the flag rose. And he's just like, oh, yo, 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 yo. it was rusted in, he corroded. And he had to like force it. Whatever. But he made it, he, so he made it happen and it worked and everybody cheered. And uh, our, our state rep, Natalie Blaze, was there. And our state senator, Adam Hines, was there. And uh, the district attorney's rep uh, person from their office was there. Got to ask everybody for money, <laughs> and I got to talk to them all. Just uh, you know, although Adam's not very, con you know, he's checking out because he's running for his statewide. It's not like a long shot, possible bid, but uh, um, but I, I told him I support him on it. But, but yeah, so he's not going to be in a position to really. Um, but Natalie, we're going to meet with Natalie in the next week or so because we want a line item in the budget for our public safety building. It's the one thing you can get line items in. But we've never asked before. So mm -hmm. trying to help old Conway out. Um, public comments on unfinished business, non new business. Vote to approve and sign the consultant contract with Fred Goldstein, Inter Isle Consulting for the Planning Board and Vertex. Bob, you got any thoughts about that? Uh, Having hiked up to the top, to the tippy top? I, I don't know anything about Inter Isle. They're a consultancy group that I believe the planning board hired. Yeah. Right. And we're, so I don't know what our relationship is with them, but I think it's great that the planning board hired them and yes. the letter they wrote made it sound like. You know they're good. Yes, I agree. I um, and, and and these things are complicated enough absolutely. that I do think that we should, you know, hire somebody to help us with all the regulations. There's a lot of regulations. And um, what's also important is that the contract with Vertex and the town or the agreement we calls for Vertex or uh, to pay for the consultant. So, um, yeah, so I looked at and I looked at that because I saw. I saw two hundred and twenty-five dollars per hour. Mm. Um, but then I looked and I said, "Wow, that's getting paid for." So good, good on, good on that. And this comes highly recommended by the planning board, whose uh, expertise and opinion in these things I give great weight. I do suspect Vertex may push back on this, though. So, so we can we can sign that we want to do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and but and that'll be a issue between them and the planning board. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, so we, I, I would, I would uh, uh, make a motion that we sign this uh, agreement with Inter Isle Second. for consultancy contract. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. So go ahead and sign it. And um, the next item on the agenda is to discuss and vote to approve the letter to National Grid, Ray herbicide spraying slash Roundup spraying along. along their right of way, which is the underneath the power lines that are on Conway. And most of us know it from being down Station Road right before you get to the end. There's that gap that you've crossed and there's those giant power lines that go across this, the South River and on up um, Deerfield and everything. So, uh, but that, and that goes all the way to town line Shelburne. So that's what they're asking to possibly have herbicide on it. What I, what I, um, what I, what Louise did in, in this letter, she took our Eversource letter that we wrote to them in a similar thing and just deleted all of the put downs and insults, which, which I requested. Um, so, so yes, and I think the letter is 
fine now. It's and ridiculous. this is just you're signing it. So what, well, yeah, we, but, we, but we, we want it. We want you. To yeah, do. yeah. And so I'll just read. So the Conway Select Board. This is to. This is to. Um, uh, National Grid, the Conway Select Board's in receipt of your notification of upcoming, upcoming vegetation management activities. The, the Conway Select Board requests that you send a representative who is fully informed about the exact nature and extent of National Grid's proposed work to a Conway Select Board meeting so that the town may have some assurances that you will follow your own required best practices as well as to answer reasonable inquiry about the proposed work. Motion for that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second, oh, I would have passed it to you and made you have you avoid getting up. Uh, are the rest of these finance committee? I wasn't sure. Yeah, the rest of oh. these are finance committee and it is six. Did they get the 615 message? Well, that's what I'm wondering if I know I had agreed with, uh, with one member, but it may be my bad having not sent that out to all of us. Uh -oh. So well, we could do my update if you want. I have sure, some... let's move I ahead. To I suspect there's mail also. So so we have we have stuff we can do. Let's move let's ahead. Let's move ahead to the town administrator update. Um, so hot off the press today. Um, the well was dug. The well. Building. Yeah. And it came in at 140 feet deep. Oh, that's great. With 80 feet of casing and 35 gallons per minute of flow. So oh. this is this is uh that's good. Cheap, way cheaper than we probably probably estimated. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Oh. yeah. So next steps are to you know get the pumps in there and and um, and the plumbing set up. So and uh, be doing working on that for us. Um, yeah, so it's great to have that that amount of water coming in. Um, a lot of mine was also talking about the flag raising ceremony, which was really lovely. And I did want to just mention how wonderful it was to have Samantha Salins and Abby Bliss, our our Conway residents, who work there. Um, and they gave really lovely speeches, uh, yeah. very moving about having grown up in Conway. And, you know the work that they do. Did that get tape it? No, no. But I did Order take a video of the actual flag being raised, and some there's some pictures, and I know they took a couple of group shots. So we'll have yeah, their Facebook page has a couple of our big group shots. Oh, are they on there already? Okay, yeah. all right. Because I'm going to ask them to send some to us. Um, I did do a training through Maya for injured on duty for the fire, police, and ambulance. Um, which was interesting. And then I've signed up, now that I'm done with the MCPPO, I've signed up for the, it's a human resources 101 boot camp put on by MMA and MMHR and in May. So I'm going to message and train and reach for June. Anthem is lovely in May. So they said. <laughs> so that would be nice. Um, but that's all I have to do this week. That doesn't get us to 6 not even close. I know. Six more minutes. What about mail? No, I, I didn't have any this week. I thought we got a bunch of mail. <sighs> well, I might get you wrapped up in the. Okay. Hey, Rihanna. Nice to see you in person. <laughs> Alan, what's <here? laughs> I can also tell you that Ron and I are talking about the work that needs to get done at the transfer station. Um, you know, the back end is sinking. So we're talking about how to excavate a little bit with that, fill things in, and eventually we're going to move those two buildings that are in the back off of that so that people um, don't have to drive back there. It's tight around there. Where are they going to go? I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, thinking perhaps on the road as you drive in on the left-hand side, if we uh -huh. can clear out a little piece of those sheds, the attendants are the only ones who have to get in there. Yeah. So it's not like you have to park in front of it or anything, and it doesn't have to be, it can just be locked. 
Uh -huh. um, because on the other side, as you're leaving the left side, I want to get rid of, and I'm hoping to put in like three spaces for the Conway Mall and ask people to please park there so that, you know, because sometimes when it's really busy, people just park in the middle and it gets a little bit, yeah, crazy. <laughs> So if we had some dedicated parking for the mall, that would be nice. Yeah, Sunday, 12 to one, that was a bad house in there. I don't, you feel like if the, if you remove those buildings at the back, that would just, that would encourage more vehicle traffic? Well, the, the problem is having, actually, it's, we have to also figure out where to move bulky because it's the really heavy um, trucks that are coming in to move our okay. big containers that are a huge part of it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and, and in that space, trying to figure out, you know, if you take away that half end, where do you put anything? Um, so yeah, we're, we're having to put our thinking hats on because the, the property lines are very close. Yeah. So um, it definitely is a challenge to make things work up there. Good project for like, I don't know, the landscape design school or something. Like <laughs> an engineer, or, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, basically, you just have to take into account how it works when the trucks come into right. pull and drop off, and they have to be able to maneuver, which is why the, the metal is where it is. Right. You know, it's, it looks a little kind of, we're going to have to redo some of that because the blocks aren't looking so great anymore. So when you, when you reference property lines, are you saying that, like, if, if the property was just a little bit bigger, it would be helpful? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Anybody ever talk to the owner? Not that I know of. You know who the owner is? No. Well, I don't. So, I, I mean, I'm I'm happy to to try to yeah because it the where it would make sense is if it were on the road going out if we had more room right there for what direction that is but going up the hill you know on that side would be wonderful if we could somehow get a little bit more room. And so, are there private property owners for the abutters mm -hmm. or? Okay. Yeah, it's um, Gemma and her mother. Oh, okay. March. Yeah, so. All around? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I could certainly, I, I could certainly approach them and see, because if there was some way, see, part of the other problem when you're, when you're designing a transfer station like this is it, it's not just making sure that the truck can get in and out, it's how do the people can get to the boxes. Right. Ideally, in a transfer station, you want gravity to work for the people, well, for everything. So an ideal setup, if you can manage it, is to have the cars driving up and dropping down into the boxes that are set up in a way that the trucks just pull in and pull out right. to remove those big boxes. But, you know, we have no setup like that. <laughs> there, so, which is how probably 95% of transfer stations get set up is that, you know, they just find a piece of land to do the best they can. You know, very few of them, I think, get built from the ground up, at least the ones I've seen around here. Yeah. Okay. So the mail I was thinking of, oh, for example, one of them was a letter that came in about um, the road construction on the Buckland Road. And, uh, and, and, and so this is really a comment for people who are listening more than, more than for us. I mean, it's probably not very meaningful for you guys who live down in the center of Conway, but for people who live at the northern end of town, it's the impact on that road when they close that road is gigantic. Uh, people who are used to just going through Buckland and through two, even to go to Greenfield, whereas you would not go through Buckland to get to Greenfield. And, uh, and, 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 so, and so when you leave your house, knowing whether or not the road is closed or not, it's really important, right? I would imagine so. <laughs> because you don't want to drive all the way there and then yeah, find out yeah. it's closed. But yeah. there's still a detour. I mean, it's, <clears> it's, a, it's, it's a, a really long detour. And right now the detour is called Bray Road. And Bray Road is a mud pit. And I wouldn't go on there with unless you have four-wheel drive. I drove through there twice today. On Bray Road, is it drying out? Um, it goes up halfway to Ashfield, and then it's a dirt no, road. No, no, no. Like, I mean, I drove all the way to the Buckland Line. Yeah. There's. Uh, so, so the road wasn't road. closed today. There, no, the road wasn't closed, and I've heard from people who live around there that it's that that it's um, th th that the part that they've closed 
and actually this was the part that was the detour I had to do this morning and then this afternoon it was a like the, the road was open but the detour right. it's like you drive down to the center of Shelburne and it's the detour that goes right. like up up, past... be, up behind Sessions Garage right yeah exactly so, so on a daily basis it may be open or it may not be open so the fact that it was open today that's good and you can feel glad that it was open for you when you got there but it might not have been so so anyway so so people were asking how can we find this out and my recommendation would be that on our Conway webpage, we add a link to the Buckland webpage mm. where they talk about the status of the project. And are they keeping that current? Yes, that, that would and, assume that they, that they keep that current. <laughs> well, it's, as current, yeah. it's as current as we have. And, and there is an explanation, and the explanation for the project, and just for everybody who's listening, you know, that basically the road will be closed to through traffic every day from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. and Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday until further notice. And detour routes have been established. And when when you as you approach there, you will know whether you have to take the detour route as to whether the detour route has black plastic, a black plastic trash bag covering the okay, word detour. Yeah, so if it's the road's closed, it will say detour. If the road's not closed, there will be a black plastic bag covering the detour. And, and and it says these are seven established. Um, and anyway, it will and so the road will be open weekends. It will be open every weekend. Uh -huh. um, so from Friday at three p.m. until Monday morning, it will always be open. They will leave it open, but from Monday through Friday, it might be closed. I was able to drive through there at like 9 15. So morning. it wasn't closed. So it was but... not closed. I mean, it was like it was slow going. And what was amazing to me was like the part that they were working on was not even the worst part. <laughs> I was like, really? This was the part you chose to dig up first? I'm sure I like I have nothing. I, I know nothing about like, you know, road work. So, so sure right now they're still that. setting up for the construction. The construction's going to go on all summer. So right now they're still putting up cement jersey barriers and, right. and they're still they're still sort of preparing and for the, when they really start that, ripping the road up. When I drove through this morning, there was a part that was um it, it said it was, you know, dirt road, but it wasn't yet. But it was it was not a dirt road. It was like it was a right. They haven't dirt. Got, it was it was like a sand. I don't know. Like my daughter was like, What happens if we get stuck? And I was like, Well, there's a cruiser right up there, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure some one of these construction guys is gonna pull us out of here if we get stuck. But so not? that was one of the pieces of mail that you know that I think there is something we could at least do. Uh, not that I think somebody from the town or Ron or somebody should drive up there and look because you know it, it, it'll change over the course of the day. They may. I know. Um, I know it's it's a bigger job than a lot of people because they're extending the water main all the way up and they're yeah, putting everybody that's... everybody up the town line. There is going to be on town. They took Water down a zoo. lot of trees right at the side of the road. Which They're rebuilding all the conduits really, that go under yeah. the road. I know they lost a lot of trees right there as you come down. It's just really sad. Yes. I mean, it's like huge trees. Yeah. In people's front yards. You know? and, and the other piece of mail that we all got had to do with Craig Warner's, you know, <laughs> being concerned about our process for buying pieces of equipment that we don't use a lot. I thought so, that was great. I was, yeah. I'm going to incorporate that into my voter guide. Good, good. <laughs> I thought it was really, raised some really great points. So, I'm... yeah, and I know, you know, um, in the past, there, there have been occasions at town meeting when, um, when, when we had, when, when Ron on, on the Capitol, uh, you know, warrant had things on there that uh, equipment purchases that were, seldom used and I, I, I remember the lift the lift um and that um the, the town town meeting would not buy that for him they wouldn't he, he tried multiple years in a row yeah and you know one of the things is that if, like frontier needs a lift to install once a year for a week to install or two weeks to install the uh, practice baseball in whatever indoor baseball practice facility in the gym and it's all that you have to go to but they have to go up to the rafters and hang all these and they have nets. a lift no, no they rent it <laughs> they rent it yeah. they rent it and so 
that's where that idea of like, Ron, you have to rent it. And, I, and, and so, since then, we've had $10,000 a year in his budget to rent a lift. Yeah. And but the downside of that is exactly what happened up on Roaring Brook Road, uh, where he went through, used the lift because he had the lift for a short amount of time, went through and cut the tops off all those trees without taking the time to clean them up because he only had the lift for a short time, made a real mess. And then after he no longer has the lift and he has the time to go through it. And that's exactly what happened at Roaring Brook Road recently. Yeah, well, but that's, I mean, that's something you can be prepared for and just know that that's part of the. <laughs> it is. That's a trade-off that people have to understand. But he would use the lift differently if he had a, that lift that he was trying to buy than when he has to rent one and use it intensively for a month. But we still don't have a lift, correct? No, we don't right. we rent one. Okay, so well, this is also very good yeah. information. <laughs> because when you own it, it, there's all these insurance, that's a special, that's a special right. like piece of equipment to insure and certify people on. But that's a problem. Right. And, um, so, so Ron being able to have a lift, it makes, makes all of the reasons he needs a lift uh, uh, way better. Yeah, I mean, he used to lift people up with the backup. He, they used to stand in the bucket of one of the bucket loaders with a chainsaw and lift them up as high as they could. And, and if you live in. Things that are really <laughs> dangerous. And so having having the lift. Oh, they had a strap. They had a leather strap to tie on. Oh, good. It, it, yeah. it, it wasn't so. so. Being able to rent the lift really makes improves the safety of all those jobs. And renting it, and you know, and Ron always says about that stuff that what we're not counting is the cost to go and fetch it and to bring it back, and and, and um, you know, and just like you said, it messes up the workflow like okay. a lot, and that there's all these reasons that you know he, he, he's still actually that's still one of his yeah the things that he's like most I'm not going to say upset about. He would still love to have a lift. He really wants his lift still. Yeah. And, um, it's funny. It's funny how the the mind the mind remembers. You remember your losses at town meeting. Um, so here, Craig is mostly looking at the over the fence mower yeah. and how you know how much do we really use an over the fence mower and could we just rent it? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. How many how many people do we we are in Conway? We have close to about eighteen hundred. Yeah, eighteen hundred. Actually, they say it's now it's a little bit closer to nineteen hundred again. Oh. That means uh, in contrast with uh, Deerfield and other small town, we are the smallest. Or no, um, there's a lot that are smaller. I guess Waitley. Well, in, the, in our four towns, is Waitley smaller than Conway? I think Waitley is like uh, like 300 people smaller. Yeah. Deerfield's, Deerfield's more than twice. Or Deerfield's almost three times the size now. Yeah. Uh, but Ashfield's smaller, Buckland's smaller, Shelburne's smaller, all of our other neighbors, Goshen, smaller, Williamsburg, smaller, Washington. Washington is like 250 yeah. people or something. Yeah, no, there's towns in our county. Uh, uh, Hawley. Right. Uh, oh, okay. Or Monroe, Florida, they have under 100 people. Smaller in terms of uh, people, but about uh, land paradise, I guess. That we're, we have a lot huge. of. That we're we huge. have a lot of. Uh, okay, I love it. I love the, the looking of our town. It's right, full of green forests. It is. Well, it's it's the downside of having a state forest right in the middle of our town. So that so that to get from one town to another, you drive through the state forest. More than one. <laughs> More than one, and then the. Gigantic land holdings that South Deerfield Water District has, and Northampton Water right. District, you know, Water Department has, and um, and it's yeah. So we're fifty six percent forest, fifty eight percent forest, or something. Trees are what we have. That is our resource. We have lots of them. So 
So we feel it when they decide to put a freeze on the pilot rent or they, they do a cutback on the amount of the pilot payments the land the they own. Yeah. Totally at control. So that, they, so that they can fund their capital gains tax cuts. Wonderful. So what time did Alan think that we were meeting? Should I call? 6.15, yeah. Okay. I will try to call in my day. Roy, I believe, is not available. Yeah, I think he said that. But... You think we could do the discussion of the warrant articles? I mean, I don't know what's what's the least. Is there anything we have to like vote on? Financial? No, no nothing to vote yeah, on. Right. Recently. Right. I mean, I always view the discussion of the warrant articles as much for. The Conway public, as as for us, people who watch today's meeting specifically to hear what all the warrant articles are going to be about. Did you want me to put up on the screen the uh, yeah, for all the money? Yeah. Okay. Sure. So, Sure, I printed that out now. Oh, the ledger size and all your papers. Of these articles have recommendations already from the select board and the finance committee, but I've never heard of them before. <laughs> the placeholders. Yeah. Placeholders. This is a draft. Okay. Yeah, it's draft. You notice there's right. no vote numbers for anything. It's just. <laughs> yeah. So I have a question, Veronique. Where's the tax levy and the maximum tax levy? Is that just the shortfall from? People not paying property taxes, or no, that's the maximum that we are allowed to tax. Okay, levy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we are always told amongst the four towns in Frontier, we always have the most room between our budget and our levy limit compared to the other three towns, but they're always right up against it. Yeah. Well, we're here. We always have a breathing space. Yeah, with 484562 at the moment. <laughs> yeah. but, but it is a nice stuff. Apparently, our neighboring towns go to like, if they have $1,000 wow. under the levy limit, then they're good year. I will tell you that for the budget itself, um, so for the, the number way at the top here, 2A, the general fund, under raise and appropriate, that's from the omnibus where all the, all the spreadsheets that we went through. The number I put in there was a 3% colon. I just went with the worst case scenario just for us to, at least of what I had developed. If the board goes higher, then I can just put that in. But. And the board goes lower, you can put that in too. That's correct. <laughs> and you can see that from last year, over here on the right, it says um, last year. Well, the current stands at 6552228, and it, that's a 3% increase over last year. So it's fairly helpful at the moment. And if I scroll down, you can see we had a nice, healthy. Free cash balance, four hundred twenty-eight um, thousand nine hundred. So a lot of things coming from free cash. A lot of things, yeah. Good. Yep. With an ending balance just just shy of twenty-two thousand. 
I so, don't, sorry, I don't have signal in my phone. Uh, it's requesting me a passport. I cannot call. There's a public town hall. Uh, but doesn't connect. Maybe it's my equipment. Um, All small letters. Yeah. All right, I can connect you to my Wi-Fi hotspot. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell the entire world my password. <laughs> oh, God. But um, yeah, if, let me see. You see Erica's iPhone? Okay, I will. Okay. So I should tell you that some of the um, articles in here, um, in the draft warrant are recommendations from town council of things that have not been in here before. Um, Article three. Yeah, it's it seems incoherent to me, actually. Article. Well, I'm not sure if I put it in the right place. So that's probably my incoherency, but that was it. I I think that was legal language just to say that the town will accept or set the, the Salaries the elected, but and perhaps that's I, I I would need to speak to her to find out. And then Article Five, that's a number I actually it should have probably been fifty three thousand because Phil, you had said that two hundred thirty five is the target for the Conway Grammar School capital stabilization. So if the select board and the finance committee voted for all of the capital expenses that the grammar school was requesting, which is 82,000, and took it out of our, the current balance of 264,000, then to put it back up, that leaves 182,000. So to put it back up to 235 would be actually $53,000. It's okay. So I'm back in. Not worth saying. Not worth making a change. <coughs> Well, at this point, it's nothing 52, to make a change. Fifty-two thousand is fine. Is, is you think it should be eighty-three or it should no, be no, no? It should be. It should have been fifty-three. My math was off there, so I'm just saying that's the reason the number went in there. It's you know what? Yeah, that, that's why. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm always a big, big fan of what what the psychology behind retail sales is. It's like forty-nine thousand is so much cheaper than fifty. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I was puzzled that it was fifty-two thousand instead of fifty thousand, only because usually we use round numbers. Yeah, for, well, for these kinds we of things. Put in no, I've 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 always wanted to try the the, the this the, I'm serious of uh, this forty you know yeah yeah like forty-nine nine forty-nine nine. So the question would be if in Article Four it's recommended to go with all three, <laughs> and I did speak with um, Principal Gordon and the. Um, and she gave me the ratings and the air conditioner the air first. Conditioning was first, right? Where's the dishwasher? Second or third? I think it was second, and then the third, I believe. But anyway, so if, if it's decided that all three, you know, if it, if not, then that number in Article Four will be less anyway. So we'd have to put less back in. So Article Four influences Article Five. Is what I'm going to say. If you want to get to 35 as a base for that one. Yeah, the, the one thing that I did want to check about if they're all three is to check with the superintendent or and Billy Hildreth. Have you ever talked to him, the facilities director? Oh, no, I have Frontier. No, Frontier. No, I have not. Just, just want to make sure that there is, that Bill Hildreth has the bandwidth so that if we fund all three of these things, that he'll do all three of these things. Okay. And so Billy comes along with our superintendency as yeah, out with yeah. the project. And oh, that's great. And actually, they're getting a lot more done because we did fund. Um, I guess in last year's frontier budget for the first time was uh, somebody there's somebody else in the facilities now department besides him. Billy, really very good. Yeah. Not quite a Conway resident, but he lives at the town line, like second to last house in Deerfield on the way up the street. So, so you're saying if this is 82, then five needs to be 53. Right. I, I would say make it 53. 
I, I mean, you, it, we have the free cash. Yep. So, don't you think? I, I mean, we're, it's not like we have to vote to change this or, you yeah, know, it's, yeah. it's, 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 this is the time to do it. I, my, uh, Veronique, when, when you did the math for two and a half versus three, did it take the overall number under 3%? You know, the overall number that you have is the overall number with 3% is, is a 3.09. I've only done it with 3%, so I don't know. Would that be asking a lot to do that now for two and a half? <laughs> <laughs> only because I don't, I, I, I tried to log in with my work computer so that I could do that. You don't mean do it the second? Yes, he does. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> he does. Okay. Um, because that's a big that that's a big that's a big bonus to it. Because that's what people that's the first thing that people do. You'll see when they get their warrant. What's the increase? Right. Yeah. And, and if you, and there's a big psychological difference again between three point zero and two point nine. Um, I can't tell you with, you know, it's the colas obviously that make the difference. I'm trying to remember the spread, but I, I want to say that 3% ended about 28,000 to the budget. And I think the low 2% is 11,000. So we're not talking huge, huge amounts of money for colas. Let me know what I'm sorry. No. On my count. Okay. So we're concentrating on the recap right now and not on the full. Article two. Um, yes, and well, let me explain actually on the front with article two that um, one of the changes I've made, it's mostly I think for my own benefit, <laughs> well, also for clarity. I'm putting in every single line that we have instead of lumping some of them together so that you see exactly how much yeah. com, com gets in it. So it's making article two a little bit longer. Uh -huh. I've kept it broken out with, with the ones that do have salaries so that people can see the difference between the operating and the, and the wages. So what causes the selectmen to go up 6,000? And I suspect that we talked about all of this when we went through the budgets, but there's been a lot of numbers. Yeah, you know what? That was actually I I, I took this from a prior one, and I think it had reflected the change that was made the following year. You know, in other words, sometimes what was voted on in that year, and then make an amendment the next year, and I'm pretty sure that's the year that we paid for Ross out of that. Mm -hmm. so no, it come out of that. It came out of the town admin budget. No, this was what was voted, and then it was decided later to to do the regular select board salary. But that's, I mean, but that's fiscal. I mean, that's right. That's, that's last year, but then yeah. it's still eighty five. So, so if that was expenses we had because we had interim and we had Ross and and you know or whatever, if last year was sort of a special year that would have might have caused the expenses to go up. It's because no, something got switched they're... over to the selectman line. Th that's from kind somewhere of what I'm wondering. Yeah. From yeah, somewhere it, else. It wasn't Ross because that was an FY tax one. Uh, so, we, I mean, I knew it was up the transfer station. So, but but that's the town admin. Yeah. Budget, not okay, us. but not us. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I so. thought it was that, wasn't it that John O'Rourke didn't want anyone to get any? Yeah. So it was basically, it was like, it was, it was reinstate. I mean, there was a period where selectmen didn't take any. Stipend? Not me. No, the other John two. and I <laughs> didn't. But, yeah, but right. that, that was the one year. Yeah, so, so that, that was, I think that's that might have caused 21 to be low. And then they, oh, and then maybe we actually chose so what's, to pay them in 22. So maybe that's why 22 is high. I, I'm just trying to understand what changed in our selectman budget. 
<laughs> and our and Veronica, you've taken notes about this these questions so that you can we yeah, can, that's yeah, right. can, yeah. can answer them next week. I mean, people will look at this and they'll go down and they'll say, "What changed?" And, yeah, and, that's exactly and, right. And we need right. to have good answers for. And it's all going to go in the voter guide, so people don't actually have to ask those questions at no, town right. meetings. That would be great. But the, so the way that this works too is that the first thing that happens is you know at town meeting, Article Two gets somebody makes a motion to separate it and go line item by line item, and um, and we go right. through it all, and hopefully people don't have a whole lot of questions but which is but tradi traditionally article two takes up like half the town meeting right. well, yeah but yeah. if we can oh. anticipate the questions and right. those you know we have like that if i can figure out how to do this online what i my preference would be to post that on the bus excel spreadsheet on the website so that people can just go look it up everything once it gets voted and it's set people can see every single line in here in the background behind it mm -hmm. If I can't manage to do that, then I'm going to try to do a PDF of each one, which is going to take me forever. So I don't really want to. Maybe I'll just do I, the more controversial. I think that your first, the, the, your that first idea is is. But I don't know if it's possible. And it will go over great. Yeah, it, but I don't know if it's possible yet. I need somebody to help me figure out if I can put that huge in Excel file. Through Word through a PDF. But a PDF you can't click through. I tried it. It only you, PDF that one page you're on. That PDF gun. Yeah, it thumbs up the works. works. They have to be like a Google sheet that you can Google Drive. So yeah, but we don't use that. We use um, Office. So I wonder if there's like a Office Online like this. But anyway, but we see you can we actually do we great. we actually pay for all that because the, all of our our schools use all the top their schools all have the top level like oh, they, product yeah, stuff use, yeah and we pay for all that and and it has been many times extended to me if, if you ever if your town needs any of this stuff just let us know we'll, you, know, you guys pay for it already so so when you get to what i'm going to put is another column on the on the far right just to explain the ones that were all lumped together before but have for instance, here under 176 Zoning Board of Appeals, that number there was the total for 170, 171, 172, and 75, and 76. So I'll put on the far right what the total of those columns are now so people can compare apples to apples. You know, and it may take a little explaining, but they'll see, you know. It increases the degree. It, that's good. It's transparency, but it increases the de degree of difficulty for those of us presenting the thing. Well, but hopefully, if people have the background ahead of time, yep. they look it up. That's and really they'll also I, have a cheat sheet yeah, in cheat front sheet. of them. So and they'll also stand up and say, "Nobody told me what the hell you do, and it doesn't make any goddamn sense." Yeah. So the other happy. thing, <laughs> the other thing to let you know in the in the school, we little thing and the things I'm going to be changing. I don't know where the number, if you look under the, the grammar school frontier, blah, blah, and it goes from 300 to 892. I don't, I think the 892 was some kind of typo. I've talked to Mike, that's going to be 310 for frontier. What number are you on? 300A, B? Uh, yeah. So there's 300A, 300B, yeah. the grammar school, then 892A and 892B. Yeah. Those are going to be 310 because they're all just going to go in order because you see then the technical schools is 320. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's that's. But I'm actually going to split them out. So 320 is going to be split out to 320 and 330. 320 will be Franklin County Technical School, and 330 will be other technical schools, which basically is Smith. Um, and that I think that will give more clarity about you know the, between the tuition that is being paid and everything. And lumping the two schools together, I don't. I just prefer to see them separate. Yeah. But I'm also adding another line in there under Frontier uh, and Franklin County for capital assessments. And I think, Phil, you remember that um, we got a worn art article language. Yeah. Where is that? It's not in there. What? Because I spoke with uh, Mike Pichella, who also talked to council and stuff, and said that that actually technically belongs as an assessment, just like Franklin County does it. It's not, it's not actually, and actually he spoke with Shelly and, and various tips are changing it to an assessment, not 
a capital request. Because in other words, it's not like we're given an option to pay it or right. Yeah. It is an assessment yeah. that's made yeah, well, that's on town. So there's going to be three lines under under you know frontier and then three lines under county, and both will have capital assessments line. So it'll have operating capital assessment and transportation program. Um. All right. Well, that's new. That we've never done that that way before. And I. Uh, um, it's on recommendation of uh, not accountant. So. Because when it, when it's a capital, when it's just a straight capital item, then we do have the town the town meetings can they they have the authority. I guess the, if it's just a assessment, they could still say no to that as well. But um, like a, if you, to the extent that you said something about. We don't have a choice about that. We do have a choice about that. We have voted no to frontier capital requests. In the okay, past. well then perhaps my language is wrong. And what the what the clearer way to do it, the cleaner way to do it is to actually say it's an assessment as opposed to capital requests. Like the grammar schools are capital requests; they're not assessments. Anyway, we can. It's an assessment of a. Based uh, well, on our is, share. Is, is this so, paying our the loan off? No, no, no. This is for uh, the walking cooler. Walking cooler. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And so, in our share of that seventy-five thousand was thirteen thousand or something. And uh, so that's not an assessment, though. I mean that that is a capital request. That's what I think too. Well, that's okay. I'll, I mean, I can talk with my. Just get, he just came in today and said, "No, they agreed," and Shelley agreed. It was an assessment and not. And he spoke to the accounts in the other three schools and mm. said the same thing. It's an assessment, not a capital request. Uh, so. I'll bring that up tomorrow at the. Okay. Is that's that's uh, I don't it, you know you want people to you you want to have to convince people. That it's that is needed. That that is a good thing, you know. And in the types of things, you know, the, I I remember, um, you know, the uh, in the past there was a capital request for pickup truck. I think some kind of mower, and um, I think it was the pickup truck that was turned down. That the that Conway Town Meeting turned down. We thought it was too much using the old one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but because there's when 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 one town votes no on a capital request, unless that town is Deerfield, in which case the request is done, unless the other. So, our, you know, our it's it's goofy with with Frontier um, and and the four towns that we're it's either Deerfield plus one is a majority, or the the other three towns besides Deerfield. Are a majority. That's the two ways you get a majority. So, if one of the non-Deerfield towns, uh, two, you know, two of the non-Deerfield towns can vote no, and it'll still pass. So then you have and, to come up with the money. <laughs> and, and then, and then those towns are held to it. It's yes. as if we, yeah. But so, under some circumstances, the town can vote no and still have to pay it. But, um, and I don't know whether. If you take it out of that context, if you just make it an assessment, does that still make it subject to the one man, one vote thing? Or what? Is, how does that all change? I always get nervous when Mike starts fooling around with stuff, not fooling around, but when Mike changes things up without really, uh, I don't know who he's talking to or how he presented it or how what, what he said or how that all went down. But that strikes, the, the whole thing strikes me as, I don't know. Well, it's exactly the way that Franklin County presented it to us. Yeah, they're so what slightly I did, different. You know, our our share in that institution, I think, is our, our that is one percent or two percent. You mean for Cog? No, no, no. no. Franklin no. County Tech. No, oh, Franklin County Tech. When they presented their budget, there was a capital assessment. Is a separate item. So what he's saying is that it's the same with Frontier. It should be a capital assessment as opposed to a capital request. 
um, you know, Frontier should be doing a capital assessment every year. But we they, don't. they do, but what in the budget? Yeah, I lumped it in uh, the past right. with the operating budget as right. opposed to. Right. So, right. So now I'm just saying, for clarity's sake, we'll split it out and we'll show what the capital assessment is, as well as the operating, as well as the transportation. Sounds a little bit um, confusing to the average person, but who knows? It feels to me that we should be asking questions. So when Erica writes her voting guide, <laughs> <laughs> no, the, oh yeah, no, these are all great questions. Um, I mean, that's like. <laughs> I mean, you know, when I look at, you know, let's say the assessors, you know, it was 10, then it goes up to 16, now it drops back to 12. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure there's a good reason no, for that. Well, no, I mean, but, I, I think but, for every single line item here where there's been any change, yeah, you know, yeah. like we're going to have to explain exactly. Absolutely. But that, but we should. I mean, we should have that ready so that people don't have to stand okay. up and say, what, you know, why, why is the difference? Like, so sometimes the number that. goes up last year and then drops way back this year because last year was a one time thing. Right. That would be good to know. Exactly. So or, with the assessor, sorry, just like you yeah, see, yeah, it's good. grayed out. And that's why, and I, I had it, to yeah. check that one. Okay. I see. It may have been that some software was thrown in there and that I have, you know, I, I don't know. I'll have to figure out why that was uh, that high. Um, and so, yeah, it's this this part of it's a work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, the, and the next line, the assessors go from forty nine to sixty one, yeah. and then only back to sixty. You know, so whatever it was, that change is a lasting change. I mean, so like all of this, like none of this is new to any of us because we've like seen all these numbers before and it's been explained like over the last month right things are have been put in a different you know budget or we've moved some, so i just think that you know that's what we're going to do is make that abundantly clear why yep. why this is different or why it looks so different from last town meeting and you know if there's a drastic change in one line it's because it's been moved to another line right and there are quite a few of them in here yeah like, um, like all of them <laughs> right. Well, and that's, you know, and I understand that it's, it's, um, it's going to be a difficult thing to explain to people, which is why, you know, any advice on how you want to see it presented. I mean, you just, you just tell people right off the bat, we're displaying a lot more transparency, providing a lot more information. The flip side of that is that it's going to take longer and it depends on you understanding that, um, you know, uh, it's complicated. <laughs> well, it doesn't. But I don't. I don't think it has to take longer. I mean, I think if we, like, if we, I mean, people can stand up and ask. You know, so why is this? You know, whatever five thousand dollars less. Why is this five thousand dollars more? And we say, well, like, we already explained that. <laughs> well, I think that's to have a good answer. Just say the right. answer, and then after four of those go by, people will stop asking. We'll say, oh, well, they probably have a good answer. All right, and some people sit there and, and like, you know, like not everyone. I mean, I, I, I'm always in favor of more transparency. Yeah. And part of transparency is not just sharing the numbers, but how you got there and just putting it right there. And and, and I, I honestly, like, I trust people here in Conway. They show up at town meeting. They're going to, they've read the Warren article and they probably read whatever, the, you know, an explanatory document that went along with it, you know? And so I don't think it's necessarily going to mean more questions. Um, because a lot of the questions, if we can anticipate them, we can answer them in advance. I mean, to me, this is not like just the, the movement of the of the money is not controversial. I mean, it's the the things that people I think are really going to have questions about is, you know, why do we need an over the fence mower, or why are we going to you know take an easement on a private property in town? I mean, this is I I do understand. <laughs> Bill says this takes up like the first half of the meeting, but I don't think it has to. And I think it's there's I think possibly it won't. Oh, bless you. <laughs> I think I think I hope you're right. But people understand the difference between the transfer station and the board of health budget, and that switch exactly. is going to be a big one. Right. And I'm gonna, you know, want to be sure that I can show that how much it's actually gone up for, you know, so people don't think that it's like some kind of slush fund for the transfer station. Right. But the Board of Health budget's gone down by so, you know, so, yeah. 
but there are definitely going to be and then and then in speaking with jan we decided to split out as it's done in our ledger the 710 751 752 to show what each of those actually are again for the transparency so um no, I think I hear something. I think it might have been something uh, on the Zoom. So, so is there an easy answer for why the police budget went up a fair amount? But, yeah, and, there, and there may be. It just... Yeah, it's quite the class. The, our, our, our share, oh, the Bridge, uh, our share of the Bridge Academy was a couple thousand dollars. No, it went up 23,000 though. So. Well, let's put it this way. Let's hope that I've got the right ones in there because it does look like quite a bit. And and then for for the fire salary, it's you know, up. Oh, that's not a thing. So, right. I, I, the, those are the ones that jump out. Yes, yes, yes. The police didn't go up that much. No, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. Either. I mean, when Ken was here, you know, you know the, the, no. Yeah, a couple things. Like his the total, class, his total was budget flat. was like was was two point something increase. Yeah. Yeah, I think they both of them barely went up. So those are clearly errors in here somehow. Which is correct. Oh, that might make that might take us to <laughs> it might three percent. Yeah. That would be good. That would be. What's your thinking behind Article 29? Uh, this was. We can already do that. This was from Donna. This town council recommendation. That and the. If it does not require a town appropriation, that town meeting, or a town meeting approval, then we can already do it. Why would we then ask for permission to do what we can already do? And yeah, well, I think it was so they might say no to codify. That would be, the, and then we'd be like, why did we do that? And you know what? It may be. It has the permission. Bill, I may have that in the wrong place. And maybe that was supposed to be in the bylaw amendments. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, she had sent these along and I haven't had a chance to actually review them all with her yet, although she's offered good questions, but I wanted to try to get them all in here. So that you see there's also one to dispose of authorization to dispose of surplus property, Article 32. And then the establishing general bylaws amendment to establish and authorize revolving funds. I think these are just all um, probably part of the Municipal Modernization Act that she wants to have to see the town put in their bylaws. And under article, let me see, under the bylaws, I think it has the article number, sorry. Um, under departmental revolving funds, and just before article 32, the paragraph that says these are just examples of town revolving accounts. She had a table in there that I was trying to put in, and it kept labeling everything as another article. And I just got fed up and took the table. <laughs> so, but as you can see there, she says that we would be, should be putting in our own table anyway, of you know, the town's revolving accounts and um, putting in there all the different things that she says under five, you know, each revolving fund authorized for use by the department for you know, which department or agency head is authorized, that kind of thing, under each of the revolving funds.
So you think eventually you'll figure out how to get the table back in? Oh, yes, yeah, so I'll, get, yeah, I'll yeah. get it back in. Okay. It's just, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to have Louise help me with the, the way it, art, it numbers the articles because it does it automatically. And it's, it's, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Blood plane over me, sister. Oh, oh my God. Um, yeah, we ought to have like an order in for dinner option that we support. <laughs> Gosh. Well, there's some hearings coming up. Yeah. On the yeah so hopefully that'll answer <laughs> questions. No. No. I'm telling you, once you when when you at town meeting, if you if you when somebody asks a question and you try to answer it with you just would have come to one of the informational meetings that we had you would know all this you wouldn't have asked that people get so upset yeah. when you say that when somebody says what's a cherry sheet <laughs> yeah you're just you have to and not you can't require people to come to your meetings yeah they come there and you got to answer the questions and got to repeat the whole thing over and over again for the one millionth time <laughs> Maybe we'll have a glossary of terms too. Oh, great. <laughs> so the floodplain thing, is this a state law that's changing that we're trying to meet? So in order for homeowners to get, as I understand it, for, the, for them to get flood insurance, you have to have this on the books. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, hopefully saying that and people having trust in the planning board We'll make this go smoothly, yeah. but yeah, anything that affects someone's property never goes smoothly. To me, smoothly is is, a, is something that you read out. And there's no interest in comment from anybody, and and uh, it gets passed by acclamation. Mm -hmm. That's smooth. Yeah. Traditionally, anything that impacts anyone, anyone's property, because <laughs> there's a, you know, there there are residents who believe that you know their definition of community just sort of begins and ends at their driveway, and when you impact, when you do something that impacts their castle, then uh, and you've seen some, you can, you can expect to hear it. 7.4 in the floodplain, right? <laughs> Might be listening to this absence. What, what do we use the Medicaid revolving fund for? Um, and here, it's Article 27 is to put 15,000 right. in the Medicaid we revolving do that fund. every year. Uh, we we probably do it every know. year, and I believe it's just to, for, for the payoffs, right? Yeah. I'll have to double check with Jan, but I believe it would be kind of like a not a complicated absence, but something that we would owe every year to. The owe. reason that we don't know the answer to that question is every year Jan is there and Jan <laughs> answers <laughs> yeah. that question. Yeah. Actually, that question comes up every year. I'm sure, it does. And it's like, and and I can remember actually who asked that question the past couple of years. The same person every year. No, nope, but but I can't remember the answer to that question yeah, right, right now. Because right. wait, what line is that? Twenty-seven, Article Twenty-seven, Page Five. I mean, when we say we're going to put in, you know, 100,000 towards the fire truck, that's clear what it's doing. But when right. it's, it's 15,000 for the Medicaid revolving fund. And I know um, that there was some, uh, I forget where that came from, but with, whether that was an email from you, Ronnie, kind of about do we want the uh, pointy headed guy, the, the scientist, the whatever, um, 
to, to talk about oh. the river. Both Nick and Donna. Yeah, so I would say, uh, you know, if he's not doing anything and he wants to come by and sit in the audience in case there's a question, I, I think a present, I don't, I don't know about it. I don't, I don't know if a presentation helps. Um, and that, but that this if is for the easement. Explain why are we getting the easement? Um, as well as the MVP grant. Of course, the MVP grant, you mean for the, the CPA funds? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, um, but basically, you know, that I, I'm concerned that you, that, that he's going to open up that, that we, that, we open up a can when he stands up and talks he oh, he's oh you know th there's pe enough people that still have a grudge about the last flood control project um and about the hole in the ground at the south river meadow uh that um you know, if he, the last time he stood up at town meeting was to say how good that'll be for flooding or for, for flood control, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I actually met for an hour and a half with Kimberly last week to have her take me through the whole history of all this work in town since Irene. And she explained that project to me and it made a whole lot of sense. <laughs> and so it's funny, but they're, they're complicated issues. Yes. Um, and it, it does not affect the flooding in the center of town. It's a different issue. But so people yeah. feel like they were told it does solve the problem of flooding in the, yeah. the no. in the middle of town. And I'm like, how can it was an you've been told that it's below the river flows in a certain direction and it's down yeah. river from the town. So, yeah. Yeah, that's what the easement is all about. Exactly. So I'm just wondering, since we only have a couple of yeah. weeks now before we have to vote, if we want to schedule another meeting with the finance committee between now and then. Um, between between now and next Monday? The next, well, the next meeting would be Tuesday the 19th, because Monday's a holiday. And I'm just concerned about how much we might have to go over before the vote to close the warrant on the 25th. It's, you know, it's true. Um, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. My problem is that I already have meetings tomorrow night. I have two of them. I have a meeting Wednesday and I have a meeting Thursday night. Wow. <laughs> so I can do those date, you know, afternoon Thursday or anytime Friday. And why can't we just do it next week? It's we we can. I'm just concerned about the amount that needs to get done. If you want to just do next Tuesday and then we'll see how it goes on Tuesday uh, and give us one more week to okay. finalize. But and if we have to have another meeting, we can do it next week. In between? Okay. Uh, Let's see. But, oh, yeah, because it's a holiday weekend. Nobody wants to have a meeting on a Friday. No. <laughs> That's what the hell's wrong with me. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that means before uh, 21st, we have to finish 25th, right? Oh, okay. So the next meeting is Tuesday the 19th, and the one after that on the 25th is when we both close the warrant. Okay. So I think Alan was saying that you all will need to meet separately to make yeah. your recommendations for this. So yeah. we, we would probably want to have at least one meeting where we've gone over all this with the finance committee before you have your, I assume, your separate meeting. Yeah, we were planning to do next week, any day after Tuesday. Yeah, that was the and we've we've been up right against it many times yeah. like that. And traditionally, you know, I remember lots of times the finance committee has had to have meetings amongst themselves before the joint meeting and after. There have been times when they've needed a separate meeting before our joint meeting and then another separate meeting after our joint meeting. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so that's. So there are a couple more things that we had talked that were lumped in with discussion of the work article, like Juneteenth. Do we talk about those or are they, do they take votes? Well, we didn't budget for it. We didn't budget for paying that holiday. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, it's, this is an issue that we've dealt with in collective bargaining and um, at, 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 as new policy at the school, at, at our school level. And, um, the administrative staff and the 
the people with the you know 365 a year jobs there they are getting an unpaid holiday so we didn't budget for it for this fiscal year but we can budget for it for 2023 last year you voted pay. to accept it for one year right as a day off as an unpaid day right. off was it an unpaid day yes. off? yeah but we could so what would that cost us if we if we know so and we'd have to add it as a warrant article uh no i don't think so that's a good question i don't know for fy 2023 no. if we i mean it's, i, it's I think so be, because our bylaw is fixed on the holiday the paid hub number of paid holidays which ones they are it's in our bylaw well, that's in our handbook, right? In our personnel handbook, and without a personnel committee, you know, we haven't had a personnel committee to right. do this. And I know a lot of the other town administrators. We, there's a <sighs> Google spreadsheet going with who's doing what. <laughs> um, a lot of them are just adding it in as another paid holiday. And so I thought we had a certain number of paid holidays, and and we yeah. added this to one of the possible, but the total number of paid holidays didn't go up. <laughs> um, for last year. I don't know. I thought it was added in because I don't remember one being taken away. Right. I don't think we took it away. I mean, we might have 11 or 12 possible paid holidays of which people can choose out of them or whatever, whatever the right number is. Oh, no. The, we have a set number of holidays. I think it's 12 and it's, and that's what everybody gets. So if you added one, it would be adding, if it were paid, it would be adding another paid holiday. But I thought the way we did it was you could either choose Juneteenth or you could choose. Columbus Day, oh. or you could choose uh, the goofy yeah. one that Massachusetts does. Patriots Day. Patriots yeah. Day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Red right. Sox Day. Yeah. Um, Evacuation Day. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I used to get that. We don't get that anymore. We, when you say evacuation day, it's basically like St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> uh, Bunker uh, Hill Day. In Boston, they call it evacuation. Yeah, yeah, no, well, we, because I work for the state, so yeah, it was like evacuation day, Bunker Hill day. <laughs> but, you know, for our schools, if, um, if, if the number, if, if we had to pay all of the teachers and all of the professional staff for that holiday, I think the, the annual number was, I think, between 20 and 30,000. And, um, and, but the school day is always expected to, the school year is expected to end. But it's just a question of how many snow days you have. Right. And this year, this year coming up is really goofy that the first day of school isn't until August 31st, because the way August falls, normally it's it's like the end of the, it's in the low twenties when your first day of school is. But um so that makes the last day of school uh the Wednesday so Juneteenth is the Monday, the 19th. The Wednesday is supposed to be the last day of schools. It leaves actually like I think three three full day they can miss three days and then it triggers juneteenth and and basically everybody's at the school committee's instruction to direct to the superintendent and to the administration don't trigger. <laughs> don't trigger that so just you know if you need extra snow days just you know tr tr do, do the late arrival early dismissals as much as you can so that you don't trigger that but uh but, uh that's an option is just to say no to the holiday. So last year we voted to make it an unpaid holiday. And the question is, are we going to keep it an unpaid holiday? Or if we make it a paid holiday, how much is that going to cost? And does it have to be a warrant article? They're all good questions. <laughs> some grammar schools could make it a paid, and some grammar schools could oh, make it an unpaid. See, that's where you get they're all so separate. If, if we that's why that's where this stuff if, gets yeah. so messed up so it wouldn't just be for town employee it just like you know highway workers and louise it would be for all of the teachers no no Te the school committee okay does all right teacher, so, so, so it's, really, it's just literally just the town administrative stuff yeah and highway employees and And I don't know whether there, you know, whether there are some employees that might, within their professional services contract, spell out their days, their holidays. I don't know. 
might be make an amendment to the next. Um, So those are good questions about Juneteenth. What are, what are the other ones? The Your cost of living allowance? Yeah, so we wanted to know what the numbers are for two and a half. Yeah. Uh, well, the numbers, I mean, you have them from the omnibus. And your other question was just the, cost, the budget as a whole. So is that? Oh, she keeps getting booted out. I don't know what's wrong with it. Um, I'll be perfectly frank. That's what it was on last year's schedule as called the discussion. Well, yeah, the, and that's that's what that's when you talk about this, what the total number is and everything. And okay. so, I mean, three point oh nine is is so I, you know I when you take a look at the whole thing though, if there is. Um, a, to me, like the, I think the difference between 3.09 and 2.99 should be what ten thousand dollars. One, be, I'd be twenty thousand dollars, twenty something. That's a so I, I, matter of psychology. Yeah, I, I feel mean, like if, we should just get if, it down. If if we can, that would be a good thing. If, if we can get if we can go below three percent, that would be a good thing. I'm not, especially if we can do it without any one particular party or person bearing much of a burden. So what can we pay for with $20,000 worth of free cash? <laughs> well, and if I have to check those two budgets, the fire and police, and if those- Yeah, are yeah, I think it's right back down. They were so, high. Yeah, they were. They definitely the link cells and maybe I did something correct. Yeah. That would be the best case scenario, actually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so if so then that, that's it. Yeah. So um so yeah, we'll have to get a note uh, to Alan asking uh, what happened. Oh, no. Yeah. And, and Rihanna gets bonus points <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> you do. You win. You're in the new chair. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I think we could do that. Can't we? No, no. We can't do that. No, but, uh. Yeah, uh, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, to me, uh, because. I came after my 40s. I speak two language, uh, Quechua and Spanish. I'm still learning about financial uh, the world. Um, I work in the government uh, as a system. Now I'm finishing my uh, Hampshire, uh, Hampshire degree. I, I need to finish. Uh, You're going to Hampshire College? Yes. <laughs> One more semester. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it because, you know, it's multidisciplinary. And this is perfect because my theory is everything is connected and everything impacts us as an individual and also as a society. And I wish and I hope I could practice more beside financial uh, community, uh, a little more in, in the town, I, I'm telling you officially that this is my hope. What other committees do you want to join? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are plenty. I was curious for the school to yeah. practice uh, really uh, because part of my thesis in, in Hampshire College is, uh, of course, basing my experience in Peru. Uh, Peru has, a, a, you know, I don't know, it miraculously survived 30% of, only we have a 30% of businesses paying taxes. Right. 70% of, of our budget, 70% of, of people doesn't pay taxes, are informal. However, it's how the country survives. And therefore, um, people are not educated because uh, our budget for education is very low. 
And what I am saying in my thesis is, um, is education for everybody, free education, because we'll boost or uh, it's going to improve our uh, economic in a long term, but education for the economic, sustainable economic development. And, and we'll boost in many different levels, including social mobility. We don't have that most. Uh -huh. and, and, but I can, uh, I have many projects in my head <laughs> and I need to practice because I know I will need money in the future because I want to create a, a non-profit organization to try to empower poor communities uh, with libraries and maybe helping them to organize, but everything is doable. But I want to practice because I like to do things in a very professional way. I was trained in that way when I was working with the government or, or public or private companies. But yes, I, I wish I can. <laughs> Sorry for my informal presentation. Uh, no, that's really, really. No, that's like, it was awesome. Yeah. It's so great. It is very cool. Thank you. Yeah, that you're like so. Please, when you have something, cool. <laughs> I will let you. That's so great. I would have nominated you this year. I had to nom I nominated somebody that. <laughs> that Jim, I don't know if you were here at the caucus. Whoever was here at the caucus oh, was it, for the frontier was it for the frontier school committee position. That the last person that had that, who I really really liked, but she was elected to a three year term. She attended exactly one meeting, oh. and there were several times when it was uh, like razor thin majority. We there there were times when there was one time when the cause that I believed in lost the vote by <laughs> one vote, and I was thinking, uh, and, and I knew if she had been there, we wouldn't have lost. It would have been the other way around. But um, but it's important important that the town gets represented. So I, I nominated a, a guy because I. Uh, just I know uh, yeah. Jared Jared <laughs> Campbell and um and, and he he's like I heard you nominated me I signed the papers <laughs> next time well I, now we know ne next next time you could have let me know, you know. but I, so I would have nominated you I'm sorry I didn't know <laughs> no but I know there will be many things to do no, it's awesome to see that you are in the office for election or uh, maybe in the because we have this is the elementary school and we have a grammar school all together there. It's one and the same. We, yeah. we, oh, okay. It's the elementary school that we call the grammar school. Yeah. Yeah. K through actually preschool for six. Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. I, my heart is broke when I because I have family I'm very poor. For and children doesn't read nobody reads them and i said i see how it is myself i grow up without book but i was on the andes learning you know uh. because there are different ways to learn right. i grew up there until i was five years old and i have memories since i was two and i was learning it's because it's a um, doing things learning, right. yeah. you know, hair, on. you know, food, you know, I, I used to uh, plant potatoes since I was two, three, following my relatives <laughs> with my bag of little potatoes. <laughs> it's, it's different learning, but the problem is when they travel to Lima in its city, uh -huh. it's a small space. And the little one doesn't learn nothing. You know, that is what I visualize to be changed. Awesome. Me, me. <laughs> good, good, good. I support all that. I want to go to Peru. Yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted to go. You need to go. It's fantastic. I, love it. I recommend. I would love it. Do we, we have, have to vote to, to adjourn? adjourn? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I second. All in favor? Um, next next meeting is next Tuesday, the 
the 19th on account of the Monday holiday. Um, paid holiday. <laughs> if they so choose. Or not. So, Patriot's Day. Yeah, great. So, um, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we are adjourned. <laughs>